delivery got complicated. Now we get to change. Now if you get, we get that emergency, so we can help ourselves. Impact stories continues to be told. Uh, but during our 25 years anniversary, you'll hear more of that. Now, he went through some of life's most difficult situations, lost his father at the age of four, and cleaned up people's homes as a minor to raise money for school. So growing up in the slum of Nungwa Zongo, life was indeed tough for Dr. Hadi Abdallah. Here's his story. People used to laugh at me. Uh, even your community, no one has been to uh, university, university, university before. before. No girl in, in my family had even gone to secondary school and comp- in fact, apart from my senior sister, direct mm-hmm. seniors, I'm from a polygamous okay. uh, family. Of 12 uh, children. Yes. All the girls which came before my senior sister had never even sat in a classroom before. Wow. So it was laughable that I could dream at that time to become a doctor and even become a neurosurgeon. But I, I decided to stay on course, no mm. matter what mm. um, the the difficulties were. Going through medical school, uh, have money to change the mindsets of our people, and we have almost about five doctors now. Wow! And most of the young guys are from Nungwa. But yeah, from Nungwa, that's Zongo. That's the story of Dr. Hadi Abdallah. He did it. You can do it too. We can all do it. And that's it uh, for the midday news. You're on Joy 99.7 FM. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Pau. Thanks so much for your company. Dr. Mensa Otabil has living word. What kind of fun is this? Hey, Joe, it's New Year. Ah, chance not for you. Go be upgrade it. Just on a dial. Star 120, star 1 hash. Now we can empty and resume level trouble. Hey, Limu. If we end up in every busum in a year, would your customer use will empty your number? Do more. Now with me, we need one of the 20,000 iPro Amber 5 S phones. Cafe door. But come up. Test it. Now for Tamo Monica. I've been now. Kaiser Ubitu Rintono. So we'll suck up with iPro Amber 5 S phone. Empty and raise you level trouble. New year, new phone, new return. We are good together. We're there for you. Everywhere you go. Tell me, will it hurt when your bumper crumbles, your headlights shatter, and your engine block is driven backwards, crushing every single bone in your legs? Will it hurt when your steering wheel squashes your chest and your lungs are punctured by the sharp ends of your own broken ribs? Will it hurt when your head snaps forward and smashes into the dashboard, forcing several tiny shards of fractured skull into your brain? Will it hurt when your child flies through the windshield, bouncing several times on the hard asphalted road and comes to rest in a broken heap just before the somersaulting vehicle lands on their crushed body? Will it hurt? When your body is mutilated permanently, when your victims' lives are shattered irreparably, when your family is bereaved tragically, tell me, will it hurt? Road accidents kill thousands of Ghanaians each year, and all these deaths are avoidable. When we act irresponsibly on our roads, we don't just jeopardize our own lives, but those around us and those at home waiting for us. So ask yourself, will you make it home tonight? Because if you don't, trust me, it will hurt. Be a safe driver. Be a responsible passenger. Look out for yourselves and each other. Arrive Alive. Arrive Alive is a joy road safety campaign. Multimedia Group Limited, in partnership with SES, KNET, and WallowAfric.com's e-learning project Willow TV, presents Joy Learning, a channel dedicated to providing educational content for all levels. The channel launches with a special focus on senior high school educational content because we believe in nourishing the minds of the future generation. Joy Learning is providing equal access to education, no matter whom you are and where you are in Ghana. Joy Learning collaborates with SES, KNET, and Willow TV to deliver a 
online new learning experience. Study with Ghana's top teachers and lecturers on the Joy Learning Channel so individuals, senior high schools, community centers and libraries get your multi-TV digital box now. Joy Learning. Keep learning. This is the Open House Party. This show is all about the hottest tracks, the latest hits, the freestyles, the amazing guests, the live phone is. It's your number one Saturday night show, the Open House Party, on the number one radio station, 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. night, with the one and only DJ Black. Hashtag Open House Party on all social media platforms. It's the Open House Party. Here on Joy 99.7 FM. celebrate our 25th anniversary, praise and thanks must go to those who deserve it. In the beginning, God who has expanded us exceedingly and brought us to a pleasant place. Indeed, our inheritance is delightful. Psalm 16, 6. All praise, glory, and honor to Christ at work in multimedia, who causes us to accomplish exceedingly, abundantly above what we ever ask or imagine. Ephesians 3, 20. Celebrating 25 years. hope to many around the globe transforming lives into legacies live in word with pastor mensa otobiel and now today's word i'm starting a series that i've titled talent work and profit talents work and profit. I believe that God has given us abilities as human beings and these abilities are God's investments into our lives. And I'm sharing from Matthew chapter 25 from verses 14 to 29. It's quite a long passage but uh, I'll be picking bits and pieces of it over the uh, period. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Likewise, he who had received two talents gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, you were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked servant and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money into the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. 
Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has much more, more will be given, and he, he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. An interesting parable. And Jesus called it a parable of the kingdom. Now, parables of the kingdom are parables that teach about the principles of the kingdom of God. God's kingdom does not operate in a vacuum. God's kingdom does not operate according to your culture or your tradition. God's kingdom operates according to his own principles. And God has principles which he teaches us in his word. And in this parable, he's teaching us the principle of talents, the principle of work, and the principle of profit. Each one has a talent. Each one must work with his talent. And each one must profit with his talent. And I believe that this parable has some relevance to you as an individual and it has a relevance to us as a people. Because if we Africans, black people all over the world, will mount up and be counted amongst the nations of the world as having arrived, we have to start changing some attitudes we have. There are a few observations I want you to look at with me in the first few verses of this passage from verse 14. It says from verse 14 that the man called his own servants. Everybody say his own servants. So the first thing we realize is that the people the man was dealing with were his own servants. Were people that he had a relationship with. They were all masters or servants of one master. They were not servants of each other. They all related to one master. And they didn't relate to the master through the other servant. And I believe that gives us a picture of how God relates to us. God does not want us to prosper through America. God does not want us to prosper through Japan. God wants us to prosper directly through him. He does not want us to receive his blessing through another servant of his. He wants us to receive his blessing directly from him. They were his own servants. And none of the servants had a higher preference over the other. All of them were loved by their master. And all of them received goods or resources from the master. All of them. Although some of them received five, and some received two, and the other received one, they all received something. Tell your neighbor, I have received something. We may not all receive everything in equal measure. There are some people who naturally have more talent in some areas than we have. If you put a group of, uh, uh, go to a classroom and, and pick a class of probably 40 pupils and put a football in front of them, they will kick it differently. Some will kick it with more skill. Others will kick it, as we used to say, stomach direction. Why? Because even in childhood, without any proper coaching, you can see that some have more skill than the other. You can sit in a class of carpenters and you would see that some, even without a teacher teaching them, has more skill than the other. And you can sit in a reading class and find that even without being taught reading, some of the students will exhibit more skill than the other. The good thing about life is that God has a fair distribution. So that somebody may have more skill in reading and some have more skill in playing football and some have more skill in beating people with their fists. In the end, all of them can become successful. These times you know that even footballers earn more than professors. And boxers can within 30 seconds earn more than you will earn all your lifetime. Every 
everybody has got something. It may not be the five that somebody has got, but you've got something. Everybody has got something. Some can sow, some can make her. Everybody has got a talent. And so for all his servants, all of them were given talent. Every one of them was given a talent. None was given nothing so that he would go and sponge off on the other. Every one of them was given talent. That talent was money, actually. It was money that was equivalent in our modern time to almost $2,000. So one talent would be about $2,000. So for the one who received five talents, he received about $10,000. The one who received two received about four. And the one who received one received about $2,000. And how many of you know that you can do something with two thousand dollars. So it wasn't as if the man gave them little pesos and pennies. No, he gave them substantial seed capital, substantial seed money, original seed from which they could work. It was not an amount that was too small to be useful. It was an amount that was sufficient enough to be useful. And that's what we have to understand that what God has given to us is sufficient. Whatever talent God gives to you, it may not be money, it may be a brain, skills in your mind, talent in your feet, ability in your hands, but whatever it is, it is useful. And that skill is usable. God gave them the seed, everybody say the seed. I'll say the original seed. Okay. The third thing you would notice about what they received is that they didn't work for what they received. The Bible says the master gave them of his own resources. That means that all of us receive things which we didn't work for. That's your talent. You didn't work for it. You don't even go to school for it. Everyone has got something. Some ability that you didn't fight for, you didn't train for, but it's in there. And you know yourself that when you were growing up, there were a lot of things you knew how to do without going to school. There are some people who have never been to marketing school or salesman school, and yet they can sell heaters to people in the Sahara Desert. And they can sell deep freezers to Eskimos in Greenland. They can talk their way through every situation. They can sell anything. And yet they haven't learned salesmanship. Where did they get the skill from? It's a talent from God. It's the master giving you talent from himself, which you had not worked for. Some people naturally are very logical. They have never studied law, but they can debate and defend their position. How did they get to know that? It's a natural gift and natural ability they have received from God. Some are good speakers, naturally. They don't need to work too hard to speak very well. They have received that gift from God. So there are things we have received which are not a result of our effort, but a result of God's grace. God's grace has gifted you. No matter what you think you are, God's grace has gifted you. The fourth thing was that each received according to their ability or capacity. When God gifts you, he gifts you according to your ability and capacity. God knows what you can handle. And God knows what you are capable of. And he gives you what you are capable of handling. Whatever gift you have is based on your capacity or your ability. These three stewards receive these talents. And each one was not told what to do with the talent. Nobody instructed them. Nobody told them, 
do this with this or do that with it or don't do this or don't do that. Nobody, nobody told them. They just received the talent. It was left on their own initiative to determine what to do with their talent. And that's what you have to understand, my friend. If you want people to instruct you in life, you may be very disappointed. That's why Solomon says, go to the ant. 